Hello everyone, my name is Luigi Pengera and welcome to another one of my thoughts on video games videos, video blogs around video games, just thinking about analysing it. And in this video I want to talk about how to make a city in single player video games, how to make them immersive, how to make them useful to the player. Now, how to make a city in single player video games, in RPGs and action adventures, immersive and viable for the player. My first idea is to make it big, is for the fictional city um, to make a significant portion of the in-game map. Now I'm going to compare two of my favourite video games here, Skyrim and Witcher 3. In Skyrim there are nine cities, but the physical size of these cities in-game is comparable to a village even in real life terms now one might say is because of the size because there are nine cities and there weren't enough uh, size to make them bigger and I like to call bullshit on that because I think there's plenty of room there is a lot of unused space particularly around Whiterun and Riften and cities like that and it's kind of embarrassing to call these cities cities in Skyrim. Let's contrast it to the city of Novigrad in The Witcher 3 and as we can see in this map that Novigrad takes a significant portion of the map. It is huge. It is almost one quarter of the game and you spend a significant portion in the game. The small city of Oxenfurt also in The Witcher 3 is comparable to that of the cities in Skyrim and Novigrad is easily about five or six times bigger than Oxenfurt. So Novigrad is certainly does have the size, the physical size of a city. Even in GTA 5 the city of Los Santos uh, does take a significant portion of the map, map if we exclude the, the mountainous areas and the, um, the, the salt lakes and small country towns. So, make it big, makes it physically big. My second idea is to make it dense with a lot of NPCs in in the city rather than having them sparse. In The Witcher 3, Novigrad does have the size of a city, but its main criticism, one of the criticisms that's been levied against it is that it's sparse. There are too few NPCs in the city uh, on the distance. I will be comparable to something like Assassin's Creed or more, or more like uh, GTA 5 but we, we need a lot more citizens, a lot more NPCs uh, to make it more bustling. That's basically it, just to make it more immersive. Now the problem with this is of course hardware con concerns is that more NPCs on the on screen at a single time is going to be uh, more taxing on we, we don't have the technology for that on PC or on the consoles. So the only way only solution is to have uh, cell by cell loading if if it's a large city anyway load each NPCs if the city is divided into a number of cells have each cell loaded as the player goes through them and then um, respawn the NPCs if the, if the player character goes back. But if you want to make a city much more dense and much more bustling, much more alive, then make, then have a lot of NPCs in the, within geometric area. Speak about NPCs have lots of different animations just to make it more immersive once again to make it uh, more alive you don't want NPCs just to walking around just milling about just following their their paths we want to see NPCs holding babies we want to see them have music bands we want to see them like prayer and I see this a lot uh, in The Witcher 3 but also in Just Cause 3 and Skyrim does have a little bit there. But just have lots of different animations. Have them sitting down, have them standing up, have them making moving alive. Just 
have lots of different animations for their NPCs. This will solve a problem where there are um, several NPCs that look like each other. Now there is so many uh, NPCs that you can create and even in a big city like uh, Novigrad or um, any of the locations in other RPGs you will run to copy and paste characters and the way to to disguise that fact is to have lots of different animations. Another idea is to have some visual culture such as string flags or raised flags, posters, lanterns, clothesline washing, uh, clutter such as rubbish in the street. Uh, GTA 5 does this a lot, having lots of different um, just visual cu culture, just things that people post on the walls. Um, statues anything that that tells the story of the people living in the city that makes it more alive the cities should also have different districts uh, in real life cities everything is functional and every district has its function so there will be an industrial district a residential district residential for other classes the marketplace, uh, water, power, and an entertainment district, whether for like circuses or adult entertainment. Skyrim does this, even in, if it's smaller cities, breaks it down into districts. Uh, Riften is in in three different districts. There's the marketplace, there's the residential area, and there's the keep. Um, Novigrad is also divided into districts we have the church we have the poor slums we have the entertainment we have the docks uh, and GTA 5 is also notable notable Los Santos is divided into a number of different districts now these will may create some dead spots but uh, dead spots have uh, a few functions and even though some most action is not in these uh, so-called dead spots it does have like a visual break from the action set pieces. The most important thing for a city in a video game is to make it useful gameplay wise. We want shops where the player character can purchase weapons and armor. I mean if, if you're trying to uh, promote this the video game setting of, of a certain game you want it to have an economy and the economy is fueled by adventuring types especially in RPGs you know the deal go to a dungeon kill some bandits sell the weapons to get loot uh, to get money from their loot it's part of the vehicle economy so make sure that, like the in-game currency has a function so lots of different things to make it useful gameplay wise On that note, um, it's got to have plenty of stuff to do in the city. Again, this ties with uh, the shopping and the, uh, the commerce. But just like random encounters, midi games such as uh, Grand Theft Auto back in the old days, the earlier games, they used to do paramedic missions where you get to play as an ambulance. Uh, car games as seen in Red Dead Redemption and The Witcher 3. Um, just lots just have just have lots of things to do there's another complaint and which i think is unfounded is that novigrad from the witcher 3 did not have that many things to do uh, it wasn't that dense and there was not much things to do in that game it certainly was big and it was certainly realistic and immersive enough but there was not meant to do there was not many stuff to do which i think is complete tosh because there was plenty of missions and plenty of places to shop and engage in gwent and all that sort of things um you just had to find it so uh obviously you've got to have plenty of stuff to do in that video game city and and if you don't have that then I, if then perhaps different architectural styles uh, modern cities such as London for example it's built up from around history so you have different uh, buildings come from different eras from the medieval period 
to early modern period to to to, to steel and glass of postmodern. Um, this can also be done in RPGs, in medieval fantasy RPGs, having some buildings built from an early point in in the game's history to some newer buildings. Maybe some of the buildings have been add to, have been modernized, that sort of thing. Just different architectural styles give a video game city a sense of built up history. Those are my ideas, eight of my ideas on how to make a video game uh, city in a single player video game for RPG and other types of games. Ultimately, it's the design of the game's mechanics that dictate how it feels. In Assassin's Creed, you need the city to be uh, lots of ledges and lots of things so the player character can run, jump, and climb. Um, in Just Cause 3, uh, the cities are facilitated so you can blow lots of stuff up. And in The Witcher 3, it's got a very down and dirty feel for Novigrad, so um, you, you spend most of the time on the cobble streets rather than on the rooftops. So it's the design of the game's mechanics that will dictate it. But hopefully, uh, <laughs> hopefully with these things that I've outlined, then anybody who's watching or listening to this will have some idea on how to make a video game, in my opinion anyway, uh, much more immersive and much more viable for the player character. Thank you for watching.